All right, so in this tutorial, we're going to be making this really vibrant, really abstract kind of space scene. I'm going to show you everything you see, and if you want to see it some more, you can head over to my Instagram right here. I posted it. It is a seamless loop, so it'll just loop and loop all over, and you can check out some of my other work. So let's get into the tutorial. So this is the original scene file. If you want to go and download this file right here, you can go and get that on Gumroad for a dollar. I'll be providing the link for that in the description. So let's get into it. All right, so let's just open up a blank document here in Blender 2.8. I'm going to be switching to the EV render engine. Make sure bloom is turned on, ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, and if you want motion blur, but we're going to stay away from that for now. So that's the ones you should have clicked in your EV settings. So let's go ahead and just quickly add a sphere. I'm going to subdivide it once, make it smooth. And this is what we're going to have for the center. Now let's make those planet things, those little circles that go around it. Super easy. Let's add in a circle. Let's give the vertices 100 vertices and make the fill type in gone. And we can just scale it out like that. All right, now let's hit tab, go into edit mode. And right here, let's click inset faces. And we're just going to bring it in just like that. It doesn't matter how thick you make it. This will be all editable. So I'm just going to start out with this. Hit X and click faces. So like I said, it doesn't matter how thick you make this because if you go back into edit mode and go here to edge select, if you hold down alt and click here in the center, It'll select these center ones and you can scale it back in and out. So this will all be editable and we will be utilizing that. So I'm going to make this right about that size. And we're going to go in and I'm going to show you how to make the node setup for those super colorful stuff. So let's click the shading tab here. I'm going to click look dev and kill the background here. And I'm going to kill this sphere for now. So hit H to hide it. So first thing we do, we're going to click new right here and I'm going to delete the principled. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a mix shader, just like this, and we're going to add a we're going to add a transparent texture shader, I mean, or node, and we're going to get also a emissive emission shader. So plug those both into the shader tabs. Let's go up here, plug this into the surface here. So now we have it back, and let's tell it where to go. So let's add a color ramp, just like this, and boom. All we have left to do is add in a wave texture, just like this. Plug the wave texture here. And let's add a mapping node just for semantics and texture coordinate. Now let's plug in the object coordinate here, vector to the vector. And now we have this. You can see nothing's happening because it's super bright. Let's just kill the bloom for now so we can just see what we're working with. So now if I take this white portion here and just slide it in, you can see it is not behaving the way we want it to behave. So all we have to do here is change bands to rings. And now we have what we want. Now let's quickly make this black portion transparent like we want. Let's click the shader tab here. Here in the EV, we just have to change blend mode to alpha clip. And now it is transparent. So if you just bring up the scale here, you get more rings. So I'm gonna give it about that many rings for now. And now we have this really, really cool. Now we have to break this up and add little particles and things like that to make it really look like a very colorful, very vibrant abstract ring. So we have to make another set. So we have to make another set of nodes. So I'm just going to highlight these, bring them down here, and I'm going to detach this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these right here, duplicate it, bring it up here and then plug the shader input back into the surface. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get a Voronoi texture, just like this. And we'll take the Voronoi, plug it into the color ramp, and now we're getting some polka dots. You might remember this from a, pa from a past tutorial. So we're just going to take the vector here and up the scale by quite a bit, and we'll play take the color ramp and just play with it till it looks like some nice star-ish particles, kind of what we're looking for. So... This looks about right, maybe too big, I mean, I mean too small. All right, this is what we're going for. So now we've made that second set of nodes. Now what we have to do, bring them together here, just so we can have organization. And let's add in one more mix shader here. Plug them both into the shader sockets, plug this mix into the surface. And you're gonna see it kind of break up. They're kind of mixing together like we kind of want but it's not quite doing, you can see the the uh, the lines just sort of disappear. We want them to sort of interact with each other. So 
Let's go up here. I'm actually going to take these two. I'm going to hit G to give more space here because we need to add, let's add a color ramp. Bring this one all the way back. Plug the color into the factor and we need to add a noise texture. Plug this noise texture into the color ramp. And what we're making here is the factor of the mix shader that controls these two. So you can already see it working. This is what we want. So let's go, go ahead and take this mapping node and plug that into the vector as well, just to even everything out. And now we're actually getting what we want. We got some splitting up. And if you play with the noise texture here, you can get more fun just like that. I think I really like this. Uh, and then I'm gonna play with the color ramp and bring in more of the lines. So it's more line, less stars. And you can play with distortion as well. I'm not gonna touch that for now, but bring up the detail bring up the scale tad and now we have this really cool ring with all these little specks and stuff it's really really cool so now we need to add some color to this whole ring it's just white and that's because these emission shaders are just white so what are we gonna do let's go ahead let's take this color ramp here and we'll duplicate it bring it all the way back here and also let's take this noise bring it back here as well plug, plug the mapping into the vector and plug the color into the color ramp. And then what we need to do is select our colors. So I'm gonna go with green, red, and blue, RGB, I guess. And we're gonna go, it doesn't have to be exactly RGB, just sort of eyeball it. Of course, you can pick whatever color you want for this. I'm gonna go RGB for this. So bring this blue here, and then the next thing we need to add is a sort of orangish red. So this is the color palette we're going for. Now let's take the color ramp and plug it into the emission of both shaders. So just like that, both on the emission. So now if we start playing, there we go, bam. Now let's just bring up the strength of the emission. I'm gonna give them both a strength of 10. Just like that, and wow, we already have a lot of great color here. Let's just go and play with this color ramp bring it over here for less space and let's play with it so we can bring in these and start showing the color and areas that we want let's go ahead and bring that bloom back in so we can have some fun BAM now let's go to the I'm gonna go and kill the world brightness so now we have this crazy colorful thing and we can play with stuff just like that just move it around and the way that you want to see your piece. So I like this. We're going to stick with this. So let's go ahead and add that circle back in. That, this guy. And let's start going around and just placing these in all this crazy stuff. So now that you have this, we're going to hit render. And let's duplicate it by hitting Shift D. Scale it up. I'm going to hit Tab and hopefully your edges are still selected, and I'm gonna bring it in just a little bit. I noticed that the bigger they are, let's just, you should make it a little bit thinner, just for composition. And we're gonna make this one a good bit thicker, just to give, if you want the focal point to be the center, make this one the thickest one. So this will be the center focal point here. So we just have this, we're gonna work with this for now, and let's shade this center circle. And it'll be super easy. So, click on it, we'll go to shading, We'll bring this over so we can get more space here. Let's take this principled, add a mix shader, just like this. Add an emission shader. And plug the emission into the mix. Now, very, very simple. Let's add a color ramp and a noise texture just to give it this little planet a little bit of abstract look. So noise texture, just like that. Plug the noise texture here. And let's just crunch it like that. Let's go in. Let's add a color ramp and add the same colors that you have here or any colors you want, but I'm gonna keep it in the same cohesive look. So now I have my color. Let's go ahead and take the noise texture, plug that into the factor and plug this color into the color. And so now we're gonna start seeing some stuff. All right. Now let's bring up the strength to whatever you want. Bring it around there. And it looks pretty ugly. I'm going to bring this green in farther. And I'm going to bring this blue in just like that. And I think if we bring down the color a little bit, 
So we're just going to work with this for now. It looks pretty bad, but you can perfect it as you go. So now we have the Earth and those circles around our planet. So now all you have to do is just go ahead and duplicate a bunch of them and position them around your object in a composition that you like. All right, so now I've placed all my stuff around. I've played with the nodes here in my, in my uh, planet. And so now we have this. Now let's animate it. So for the actual nodes here, all you have to do is take this right here on the mapping node and you rotate it by 360 degrees and now they're all I, I rotated the Z so rotate the Z by 360 degrees I have it at 120 frames and you have this loop but it's kinda cool but it's not quite cool enough for me I wanna have a camera rotating around it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit shift A and we're gonna go and add in a curve a circle specifically and let's also add in our camera. But before you move the circle or the camera, go to the camera constraints right here, object constraints right down here. Add object constraint and follow path and select that circle. So now when you scale up the circle like this, your camera is pointing in the way you want. So now I'm just going to take my camera and I'm going to hit R twice to rotate it to be looking at our object here. So just rotate it by hitting R twice in your mouse and you just sort of position it the way you want. Just like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. So super close. Of course this could be a look if you want. It's pretty cool. You can rotate your scene around. That's actually not a bad animation but I want to make it look farther out. And a camera trick for those of you who are photographers, we're technically going to change the lens. So I'm going to go to a right here in the camera settings on focal length change it to about 15 and so now we have basically a 15 millimeter lens if you go back to the object constraint and you play with the offset here now we're going in a circle so I'm going to take the cir bezier circle here and bring it in a little bit I want it to sort of interact with my scene so I'm just going to hit R twice on the circle and bring it around till I want it to start interacting go back to the camera and play with your offset till you like the animation and then here on the camera I'm going to rotate it so that the planet is the center of attention and now we're going around and playing with that so we have 120 frames all you have to do here on the offset is first go to edit preferences and in your animation tab make sure your default interpolation is on linear so I'm going to go to offset hit zero I'm going to right click hit insert keyframe go to the very end and I'm going to hit the right arrow to skip a frame to go to frame 121 and on the offset hit 100 enter right click insert keyframe and so now you have your animation the last thing I'm gonna do is add some volume it's still lacking just visual interest and the reason why it's because we have this crazy not so good looking plain black background just doesn't look that good we need to add some atmosphere so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go Go to mesh, go to icosphere, and I'm going to scale this till it fills the scene just like that. And we are going to add. So then now let's hit shift A. Sorry, we're going to hit control A and apply scale. So what we're going to do here is make sure that this object is selected. So it's selected now. Let's go back to shading, click new, and we're going to delete the current principled and add a principled principled volume we're going to take the principled volume and plug that into the volume socket now you can see everything messing up I'm going to take the density and give it 0 0.01 on the density but still nothing happens because these are just emission shaders they're not really going to affect the volume when we're in EV so let's add in a color ramp just like this and we're going to get a noise texture we're going to plug this noise into the color ramp and plug the color ramp into the emission strength. That's when we're going to start. Okay, see, now it's too bright. So let's just take the color ramp and click the white portion. And we're going to bring it all the way down until we can start seeing what we want to see. So now we have some volume here. And let's bring it in just like this. We can bring up the scale of our smoke here. And we can start playing with it. So if you start playing with the color ramp, you can start seeing some fun stuff happening. So let's bring the scale down till we get around this. 
And then if we take the other one, we would just want to sort of even out everything we have going on. Now let's color this really quick so that it matches the scene. It's just not plain and white. So let's take another color ramp here and let's bring everything back. So let's take a color ramp, take this here, take the noise texture, plug that in there, plug this into the emission color and let's add two colors that we want. So I'm going to go, I think I see a lot of blue in this scene. So we're going to add some blue and I'm also on the second one going to add some purple. So as we play with this, the strength, we can bring the strength up now. You can see this purple smoke and we can just play with it until you like it. And if we hit play, we have a pretty awesome scene. I'm going to hit my camera here. And we have this really awesome, it's lagging because of the volume. If I just take our volume object here and hide it, we have this really awesome animation and you can use for whatever you want super vibrant super abstract and take the scene back in last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some depth of field so we're gonna go and click on our camera click on the camera here click depth of field you can already see some stuff happening so I want the depth of field to have it to where this is sharp so that would be here on focus distance so we can just start bringing that focus distances until so you can see the line sort of happening here that's helping us with the bloom so you can see the focus line right about there so it looks like it's about 5.4 m for me and then if you want the the sort of what's it's called bokeh to be more extreme you can take the f-stop and just click it smaller and smaller and so now the stuff close to me is out of focus and you get Take the f-stop. So now it's super extreme. You can go and play with the focus distance and really make sure you have it correct if you have the f-stop really far down. So just like that. And you can bring your f-stop back up to something reasonable. So right there, that looks really cool. And if you press play, it looks really awesome. Very nice, really cool motion graphic you have here. So let me show you how to export this really quickly. So you go to the export settings. I would recommend keeping it at 1920 by 1080. Right down here, change it to FF MPEG video. It's usually at PNG, so FF. Change this to MP4 and go from medium quality to perceptually lossless quality. And you would just save it just like that. And you would go to render, render animation. So there you go. You made a really awesome animation. I hope you liked this. I hope you learned something. And thanks for watching.